So, hi guys, Mikey from 9 Clubhouse here. Hoping you're all keeping safe during this crazy COVID-19 lockdown. I figured you guys might like to have access to some tools to work on music whilst we're all keeping safe in our isolation bubbles. Today, I'm going to show you what risers, downlifters and sub drops are, where to get them and how to use them to bring some excitement and energy to your tune. In the next video, I'll be showing you what chops, drops and re-triggers are and how to use them to change up your arrangement and really make a tune pop. Before we get into it though, um, I need to ask you to get some headphones to listen to this tutorial. Um, you'll definitely need to, them to hear some of the low frequencies we're talking about today. So pause the video now and go grab a pair if you can. If you don't have any headphones, don't worry, earbuds will do. So let's start at the beginning with what risers, downlifters and sub drops actually are. And I'll be straight with you, even though I know what they are and I can recognize them in a mix and you know, I know what their purpose is, I'd find it kind of hard to explain to you exactly what they are without giving you an audio example. Luckily for me, we have the internet and I can just Google it. So let me open up my browser and we can have a look at what the internet has to say. So this definition here reads, a riser is usually a sound bait used to build tension. Sometimes they may have a melodic element, like a gradually rising pitch. Other times they might be more noise based like white noise with a gradually opening low pass filter. So they are often used to build up to a new section. So this is common sense. I mean the clue is in the name, right? It's rising the intensity or rising the energy level of the tune. This definition is almost exactly how we're going to be using them today, a way to transition between sections whilst building excitement and tension. Um, and you know, if it doesn't, still doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry, I'll play you an example in a sec and I'm sure it will be totally clear. Um, before we do that though, I want to quickly talk about downlifters because from an arrangement point of view, they are definitely linked and they perform a very similar function. So let's see what the internet has to say on this topic. The top here, okay. Boom. So these guys say a downlifter is kind of like an upside down riser. Um, dive effects usually have lowering pitches and often signal the end of a section. So first of all, this is the first time I've ever heard them referred to as a dive, but cool, whatever. The thing they call a dive, and I know as a downlifter, is essentially just a riser in reverse. Um, and it releases tension and signals that the next section is moving into a less energetic state. Today I'll be using them in a slightly different way, but you should still get a good idea about how you can use them in your projects. Um, okay, so the last idea I want to give you today, uh, new idea, sorry, is that of the sub drop. And in all honesty, if you've been to the movies in the last 20 years, you'll be well familiar with the sound. Um, in fact, this effect is so overused, there are YouTube compilations dedicated to pointing out how widespread the use is. Uh, let me show you this one called The Most Overused Sound Effect in Movie Trailers 2017 Film Trailers Cut Together. <laughs> I've killed Rangers before. Oh my god. This is Downs Homicide. There's a reason we will. You Right, so you guys you guys get get the picture right. It's a heavy, low frequency bass hit that slides downwards in pitch until you can feel it more than you can hear it. Um, bass drops usually accompany a pivotal moment in the delivery of the storyline. And if we think about the arrangement of our song as a story or a narrative that unfolds over time, then we can use the bass drop to accent those important parts in much the same way. Um, it's worth pointing out that Subhit started off life as a storytelling trick of the cinema, but they have now 
become fairly common in popular songs of pretty much all genre. Um, and um, Rises and Downlifters are a s- similar story, really. When I first heard them about 20 years ago, they were pretty much only used in trance, techno, or other forms of EDM. These days, whether you're building a uh, kind of a minimal Billie Eilish style beat, a, a SoundCloud sort of rap thing, or a rock or EDM track, or something pop like Ariana Grande, um, you you'll probably find a use for these ideas. So let's get into how to use them and where to get them. So I'm just going to go back to Reaper and. I've opened up two versions of Loop Man here. Uh, sorry, the Loop Man how how to intro. Um, one of them is uh, basically as it was at the end of the last video, um, with exceptions. And the other one I've added rises, downlifters, and subdrops to. Actually, you'll notice this first one here isn't exactly the same as where we we left it after last time so i've added a bridge here in the middle section after consultation with bees because we went we want uh ethan g to have some space to do his thing and a bridge is a great place for that now bridges are really common in modern music and they basically serve to provide a place to go to in an arrangement that is different from the ideas that have come before it's kind of basically to stop your ears getting bored so go ahead and experiment with putting one into your tune if you'd like to they can be almost any length but i would stick to either eight or possibly 16 bars long so you'll also notice that i've added labels to all of the parts at the top here so you can easily see what they are these labels are actually really handy for another reason too so if you wanted to try out a different arrangement quickly you can just click and drag the arrangement labels to other places in the timeline and all of the parts in that area will be dragged with it so if i did that with the bridge for instance and say i wanted to put it after the uh, second verse i can just click it and drag it and drop it and all of that will be moved over everything that was in the bridge there is moved over here uh, cool, eh? So if you want to make um, arrangement regions on your track, I'll just do it over here. So, um, you can just drag a loop selection area like we did in the last tutorial. Um, and then hold down shift and press R. You, that'll give you a region. Um, and you might also want to give it a name and color like I have um, and you can do this by holding down shift and double clicking I think yeah um, and I don't know so we'll call it say test and we'll make it purple cool and there you go you've got your um, you've got your region that you can drag around and it's a label so um, those are those are actually really handy when you're sketching out songs um, okay so here we are in uh, Reaper and we've got our two versions um, and let's do a comparison of the intros. Uh, the one with no rises first and the version with the rises second. So let's have a listen to this one. This is just the intro. <laughs> And with the rises. You can hear how the riser and the downlifter really make the transition into the hook. Just that little bit more energetic and hyped. Um, and this is what we're hoping to achieve by using them. Um, and another way of using risers and downlifters is by combining them with a sub hit, which um, I've lined up in the transition to the bridge. It's over here. Yeah, so let's have a listen to that. So 
So you can hear what a massive difference adding these simple parts makes to the arrangement. Um, you know, if we go back to our original and have a listen to the same part, it just sort of frankly sounds flat and totally mechanical by comparison. So let's have a listen from the same place and see what you think. I've done a similar thing at the end of verse 3, which is basically the end of the tune. Um, so let's have a listen to that. Let's Again, it adds a sense of movement and uniqueness to the transition. And this is really important if we're, you're doing what we're doing, which is building a song out of otherwise completely repetitive loop structures. So now we know what these things are and how they're useful, but we haven't really talked about how to get them into your projects or where to download them from yet. So let's do that now. You won't be able to find these elements um, on Looper Man. So I'm going to show you another couple couple of websites that I like to use um, to download samples from. So, um, um, again, I'm using Chrome, but you don't have to. Um, I want you to go and do a Google search for freesound.org. Or just freesound, actually. That'll get it to you. Um, and it should look like this um, it's a similar deal to looper man except the library is all about single samples rather than loops so just like looper man you'll need a login before you can download so if you have your own email address you can create yourself a free account um, by clicking on the register up here um, if you don't have an email I'm totally happy for you guys to use the clubhouse login um, the 9A Clubhouse login is 9A Audio Crew, all one word, and the password is China25, so that's C-H-A-E-N-A-E-2-5. -E it's all lowercase and it's all one word. Um, don't worry about remembering it, I'll put it in the video description. Once you've logged in, it's as simple as going to the search bar and typing in what you're looking for. Um, I found Freesound is pretty good for subhits, so let's type in subhit. Oh, yeah. And let's see what we get. Um, cool. All right. So as you can see, we just get we get about two hundred, just under two hundred samples to choose from that search term. The quality is pretty variable so have a listen and see what samples you like and um, choose the ones that will complement your track. Um, I chose... Uh, oh that's so good. Yeah I love that. Uh, I chose that one, Trailer Sub. And this one here, Sub Down. for the tutorial that we're doing and um, for the tune that we're writing. But you don't have to. I mean, there's tons of them here. Um, and, you know, they're all different. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Um, once you're ready to go, it's as simple as clicking on the title um, and going over to the yellow box over here and clicking on download. Um, cute. So once it's downloaded, um, it's it's from here on it's kind of just like working with Looperman really. Um, you just uh, click on sample and drag it into into Reaper. Just make sure it's in the the basic version. Yeah, cute. Yeah. So you just click on it, drag it in, and the gray box <clears throat> so I want the sub drop to hit right on the bridge so I'm going to line that gray box up with the start of the bridge 
and drop it there. And before I forget, I'm gonna rename it. Oh, not bridge here. <laughs> Ooh. Sub drop. Boom. Um, so I suggest you do name everything and you keep them all on separate tracks. It will definitely help when you're mixing and uh, it just helps to keep everything tidy when you're doing the stuff because otherwise you just forget where things are and it gets a bit hectic. Um, so you can do you can create new tracks in two ways. You can do what we've done, which is to just drag this the sample in, um, or you can press uh, Control T. We'll do it. I think it's Command T on the Mac. Pretty sure. Um, and if you forget the key command, don't worry about it. It's just up here on uh, Insert, I think. Yeah, down here on Track. So Insert and then Track. So there's heaps of different ways you can do it. Um, so I'm going to call that one, the next one that we've created, I'm going to call that riser, just by double clicking on it. Riser, boom. Okay, um, now you can download risers and downlifters from Freesound, but actually I found I like the risers um, at this next site slightly better, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that is and we'll go and check them out um, so we'll go back to our browser and open up a new tab and we'll do a, a search uh, for sample swap swap and it's all one word and dun, 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 dun. it looks like this um, so sample swap is kind of like a combination of both Looperman and Freesound in that it has both single samples and uh, loops in it, in its library, sorry. Just um, the thing, I mean, like like those other two sites, is completely free, um, but you and you will also need a email uh, registered and an account before you can download. So... Once again, if you've already got an email, you can register here. Um, and uh, if you don't, you're most welcome to use our one. Um, and our one uh, is the same login details. Okay, so it's 9 Audio Crew, all one word, all lowercase. And the password is chinai25, C-H-A-E-N-A-E, 25, all lowercase, all one word. Um, don't worry about remembering logins. As usual, I'll put them in the description below the vid. Um, so, once we've logged in, we're going to do things a bit differently to Looperman or Freesound. We previously we've largely used the search bar up here um, to find our loops and samples. I'm going to show you uh, a different way of doing things, um, specifically because um, I already know where the, the risers are. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the good stuff is, um, but you know, there's, have a look through here sometime, there's some good stuff in here. So, um, first let's make sure that you're on the home screen, which is up here, cute, um, and then open the folder down here, it says sound effects and noises, we'll just expand that, and now we're after noise sweeps. Okay, so um, this part of the screen is, is kind of like, it's fairly basic, the um, interface, but it's, it's still really good. Um, to audition a, s a sound, you just need to click on one of these blue speaker um, icons on the left here. Um, so, I don't know, I, can't, I really like these um, modular ones here, so... You know, like there's tons of them, so just, you know. <laughs> oh, that's pretty kooky. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to 
download one of these ones here just to show you how it works. Um, and the downloading process works a little bit different on here. Um, what I'll get you to do is right click on the sample that you're interested in and then go down to save link as and click on that. So um, by default, uh, it'll pop up in your downloads folder and that's totally fine. So um, yeah, just click save and it will download like normal. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to grab the um, downlifter, which is, I think it's called, is that one? Yeah. yeah, it's that one there. So, uh, and then save link as, and then it's going to pop up and downloads. Yep, cool. Save. Thank you very much. Um, so now we've got it downloaded, we're just going to do the same thing we've done on all of the other um, projects. We're just going to drag it straight into Reaper. So I'll just check that I'm in the right place. Yep, cool. There's Reaper. Uh, and grab that one there. And so Reaper. This is going to be our riser. So I want to align the right hand side of it with the section, which is that we're going into, that I want to rise into. So we're rising into the bridge. So I'm going to align the right hand side of that gray box with the uh, bridge, which is that blue line. So pop that in there. And um, the, our downlift is basically going to be the same thing, but we're going to line up the left hand side of um, our gray box with the whatever section we're downlifting from, which is in this case is going to be hook two. So I'll go back to um, uh, our Chrome and click and drag, pull it into Reaper. And I'm just going to drop it there because there's our left hand side and it's lining up with the edge of hook two. Cool. Now, because this one sort of um, swells a little bit, I'm actually going to pull it back this way a little bit and uh, add a little fade in. So fades are cool in, in Reaper. You can just grab, grab the top right or top left hand corner and just sort of create an automatic fade in and fade out there. Yeah, it's awesome. And the other thing is I'm going to make the riser um, maybe a little bit longer. Maybe might make it four bars longer. So I'm just going to do the same trick that we have been doing with our loops and go to the right hand side, press alt, and make a fist out of it and then drag it out. Um, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, something like that. Let's have a listen. Oh, maybe not actually. Um, before I preview it, I just want to um, point out that you're going to have to lower the volume on the, these sounds because uh, this a little bit of these sounds goes a long way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend pulling them back on the mixer quite a bit and then mixing to taste. Um, so re remember the mixer is uh, you control M if you're a, a, a quick keys kind of person. Oops, that's in the other window. I'll just pull it down. Um, so I'm going to pull all the riser and we'll call that one down lifter. Uh, yeah. Select both of them and pull them right down. Maybe uh, as much as 20 dB. Let's have a listen and see what that is. A lot anyway. Pull them down a heap. Maybe I pull them down too far actually. I might try that again. So control M for mixer. I'll pull them up maybe to negative 15. Let's try that. Yeah, that sounds better. Cool. Traditionally, risers and downlifters aren't put next to each other. 
like I have in this track, but I kind of really like the effect that it creates. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And it sort of creates a sort of peak of energy and then it transitions to something else, you know, which I kind of like. Um, so, yeah, that's, I'm just going to leave it that way. Um, you will have noticed that there are tons of other types of samples and loops, both at free sound and sample swap. So have a really good look around and you never know, you might find something really cool that inspires your next tune. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up the topic. Today we've talked about what risers, downlifters and subhits are, why you'd want to use them and finally where you can find them. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about chops, drops and sample retriggers, which are really fun ways of getting your loop based arrangements to sound way cooler. Um, thanks for watching. Until the next video, I hope you all stay safe and look after each other. Okay, bye for now.